Hi, welcome to the InterAxis channel and InterAxis.io. We're going to keep talking about some of these building blocks and governance, and today governance uh, we're going to discuss and we're going to specifically talk about DAOs. And we've talked about DAOs before, uh, it was several months ago, and there have been some great strides in, in, um, in, in the DAO world. And so we want to talk a little bit about those and how important this particular building block is in decentralized finance and how important we feel it's going to be as we continue to move forward. First, I want to remind you, please subscribe to the channel here. Um, give us some comments if you, if you like. Ask us questions. We try to answer as many as we can. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. We hope you like all this. Now we're going to move forward with governance and DAO. So what does DAO stand for uh, again? This is a decentralized autonomous organization. Okay? Not very legible. That's okay. Decentralized autonomous organization. Now originally the idea of a DAO in the DAO, uh, as we as it was originally called, the DAO was a completely decentralized uh, code that, that was put out there. So the idea was you could have this complete th this code that you put out there on a chain like Ethereum that of course is running smart contracts. So it's essentially a smart contract or series of smart contracts that are all interchangeable and working together um, to, to try to perform some sort of tasks or basically create its own organization. So the one of the better examples or, or one of the examples we, we have heard before that that really started you know taking off especially a few years ago that people started thinking about was the idea of this um, DAO that's like a, a um, ride sharing okay like an Uber or a Lyft okay and the idea is let's say that uh, you have self-driving cars okay let's go way in the future probably like two years right where you have self-driving cars and let's say the cars we, we all a bunch of us pool our, our money our tokens together and create this DAO this self-driving car uh, DAO this ride-sharing DAO so we, we create an app okay and there are utility there are tokens related to it okay and the cars can drive themselves. The cars also understand when they need things like an oil change, when they need to go fill up. Now, they're probably not filling up with gas, they're probably charging themselves. So let's assume that we can write all that code to do that, and I pull up the uh, the, the DAO app on my phone and I call the car, the car, you know, I, I call the car, the car comes to me, doesn't really need a driver. I get in, it takes me to where I want to go, Everything is done autonomously through the wallet on my phone, through the app, that it's paid in cryptocurrency. Now the car knows it, it, how much money it's making, and at some point, it, it, the, the DAO, the code tells it to adjust prices as needed. Of course, Uber and Lyft and such have their surge pricing, whatever. It adjusts prices as needed based on traffic patterns, uh, based on events that are happening. What, what have you. So then it knows when it needs to go charge itself and shut itself off. It knows when it needs uh, some sort of service. It knows when tires are low and it, it knows all those things and it can call, a, call it for itself and, and actually go in for its own service. Um, and then the DAO, the company, right, because when I pay in tokens, the, the money essentially goes back into the DAO. We can monitor how, you know, which cars need to go where. We can monitor what the demand is in certain places and have more cars in, in certain areas. We don't have to do that. The code does that on its own. Right. And eventually, when there's enough profit, the DAO says, oh, we have not only do, do we have enough tokens stored up, but we have enough demand, let's go buy another car. So it, the DAO essentially goes and buys another car, uh, buys the insurance and everything else on it, and puts that, that out in the market. Okay? That's uh, in, a, in this weird, uh, ideal, decentralized world, that's what a DAO could do. Now. We had the DAO hack, the, the, Ethereum, the big Ethereum DAO hack that gave a bad name to DAOs several years ago where someone uh, hacked the code and stole quite a bit of uh, ETH out of this smart contract. And it was a, a little while before DAOs kind of made a, a comeback. So now they've made a comeback and they're not as autonomous like that. So they're, they're not autonomous in that for the most part we don't just kind of set them out there and let them do their thing, their code. What it is more of is a set of rules. Okay, so you have this uh, set of, the, the DAO is now a set of rules 
and you potentially have DAO members, and DAO members might buy in with a token. Okay, so if I'm a, a DAO member, I might buy in with a token, and I'm subject to, to some of these rules in order to have this token. This token goes in my wallet and affords me certain abilities to vote on things. Now, the rules state how, like, a proposal comes up within the, this organization. This organization could be uh, a charity, it could be a nonprofit, it could be a for profit company, but the, these rules are in place so that we don't necessarily have to have a hierarchy of management. Okay, We don't have to have necessarily a president and a vice president and all these things. Everyone can just go uh, kind of do their job if needed, and we, by virtue of having the tokens in our wallet, can go vote on what happens. We can. Th there are certain rules that says, here's how you bring up a proposal. There, of course, is the, you know, the, and there's different DAO structures. There's Malak DAO, um, there's uh, Aragon has, has DAO structures to where they have the rules already there, you can customize them. And there are other companies that help you customize based on the needs that you have. But there are certain um, rules in place say, here's how we bring up a proposal, and then here's how we use these tokens to vote on said proposals. And then there's a level of transparency, right? Because transparency is really key in these. The fact that there's transparency potentially in how everyone voted, because I vote using my tokens. Now, there might also be uh, something in there that says, look, if I'm trying to do something malicious, uh, I might have my tokens taken away. Right, because if I'm really trying to do, or, or a few of us get together and, and, and issue a proposal and vote on something and, and everyone else determines that's malicious, um, we might have some of our tokens, we might have to stake those tokens and they get taken away. Um, it might also be that I can, uh, Moloch Dow has a feature called Rage Quit, where I decided I want to get out, I get my, uh, I, I exchange those tokens potentially for ETH or something else, and I can leave at any point. Okay, so that um, is kind of how a DAO is working. Now, where we're seeing DAOs, uh, potentially, uh, especially at the beginning, is in nonprofits. Okay, there are a lot of uh, charitable organizations, and some of those, you, you know, we think of charitable organizations like they're, they're giving out money, but there are a lot of nonprofits that are, especially in the DeFi world, that are maybe handing out money and, and handing out um, uh, some funds and some help to some other DeFi companies that maybe just need uh, a little bit of cryptocurrency help and such. So what happens is I might contribute ETH to the DAO or DAI or, or whatever it might be and I get uh, a certain number of, of tokens and we get to vote. Now the DAO potentially has this, this pool, this wallet of money and we can vote on how that money gets distributed. So it might be, uh, again, if it's a charity, it might be to certain causes. Um, if it's a, a nonprofit, like a, almost like a nonprofit type venture capital type thing, we can decide which, um, which projects or whatever are going to get some of these funds. And then it's very transparent. And the rules up here state, okay, when we vote, and if the vote is 75%, the money gets distributed. Okay, that's just what happens. And there's no, you know, arguing about it. We can all see it. We've we've discussed it. Again, this is people. This is not completely autonomous. But there are certain rules at place that says here's how you bring up a proposal. Here's how long. Here's how many iterations, or here's how many blocks a proposal has to go through um, before it's put up for a vote. Here's how the vote works. Here's how, what you do is I I go to the website. I connect my wallet to show that I actually have these tokens. I vote my tokens one way or another. And when once the, the vote is done, funds are distributed. We can all see how they're distributed. And if after a while I decide I don't like what's happening here, potentially I can just quit. I can exchange my tokens back here. I get my ETH out. And now someone else can get it. But it's a way to actually have organizations, whether they be charitable or now there are some that are actually for profit, that are actually run and managed by a group of people. Those people that have put in their money now get to decide how that how those funds are being allocated rather than have this by in a you know traditional charity, this um, kind of black box where this money is might go to pay management of the company 
So they have to hire people for the company that then have to uh, deal with the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the charitable organization. Well, these people cost a, cost a lot of money. Now, they, a lot of them do really good work, but what we've seen kind of is the, the problem sometimes is, let's say whatever charity they were created for, uh, is th there's no need anymore. Well, then these people still need jobs, right? So they need to go find some other purpose. They need to go find some other way to make money. And look, by the way, they have to take a lot of their time to go ra keep raising money. Well, what if it was just, a, again, a group of people that saw that as a need and a, and a cause and got together and you know, contributed their money and just voted on, on how that money, how those funds are distributed, and it's all transparent. Well, that's what a DAO can do. Again, it could be a charitable organization or it can be a for-profit company. And you can basically take away a lot of those levels. Remember, DeFi and crypto, a lot of the point is taking away, is disintermediating. Well, sometimes levels of management are the intermediaries that we have to hire and pay and have them do day-to-day -day operations. Now, there still might be some day-to-day -day operations, but the decisions on dispersing the funds can be made essentially by the token holders, those that actually contributed. Now again, if you want to go watch our video on the augmented bonding curves, you'll see even more about how this can be done, where I can buy in to, or I can put my money into this, um, this bonding curve, this augmented bonding curve that gives me voting rights within a DAO, and the, the curve can be such that I can you know, put my, my funds in at, at a certain level of the curve, here, and the more people, the more good we do, the more people that want to contribute, when they put their funds in, the tokens actually get more and more expensive. So it costs them more to actually get in. It costs them more tokens. Okay, but because of the fact that it's a smart contract, they can actually sell their tokens at some point. So if I buy here, I might sell when the, the token is, has this value up here, and I actually can profit on the fact that we did a good job r helping to run this organization. Okay, and that we'll link to that the augmented bonding curve uh, video that discusses that a little bit. But that is a little bit about DAOs because what we're seeing now in the terms of governance is these organizations that are starting um, that have a purpose have people that that usually are dispersed around the world that have a certain cause. And again, that cause can be for profit or it can be charitable, and they all want to be able to have a say. And the DAO is a way, the decentralized autonomous organization, the autonomous part says, we're going to put these rules out there. We're going to put them on chain. These, these are the rules. This says how you bring up proposals. This says how you issue money. This says how you come into the DAO, what your tokens are like, how you vote, what percent of the vote we have to have. But once all those criteria are hit, bam, we disperse money, or, or we enact some sort of proposal, or whatever it is, and we don't necessarily need a whole bunch of levels of management. We can disintermediate that, and therefore we can actually create lean charities or lean organizations for a certain cause, and, and that might only be uh, you know, a one-year cause. You know, maybe it's a, a, some sort of, in this time, COVID relief uh, cause that we, we're not going to need that forever. It's silly to hire a bunch of people to decide how to d disperse funds or something. We could all pool our money, decide we're going to buy PPE for certain healthcare workers, and we all get to vote on which healthcare workers get it, where we're going to get the PPE and all that. We make our vote, money gets dispersed, uh, products get dispersed, and it's done. And when, and when there's a vaccine and we, everyone gets to go back to their life, we do, everyone just gets their ETH back for their tokens and, and we're done and we, and we get to walk away. So that's a little bit about DAOs and about how important that level of governance, the fact that we're um, decentralizing governance, the fact that, that we can use cryptocurrency tokens. Now, the, the question is, can we do this without cryptocurrency, without tokens, without decentralized finance and blockchain? And the answer is, um, yes, we probably could. The, the difference is we don't have, this would have to go into like a bank at that point, meaning it's not nearly as transparent. It is subject to banking rules, it's subject to fees and, and other frictions and stuff. Who's the signer of the checks? Who can actually disperse 
funds? Do you worry about that person running off with money? Things like that. You have all those issues. You, if you have people around the world, how are you going to s decide who, who voted on what and how they vote? Is it you get around on a Zoom call and, and people raise their hands or what? The, the fact that you have tokens and wallets and such gives you the ability to make those votes, make them immutable so you can't go back on your vote, make it transparent, and then this just happens. The rules just happen. And of course that could, from a legal standpoint, happen in the traditional world outside of decentralization. Uh, but the problem is enforcement. This gives a level of enforcement here. It says that if we voted a certain way, the money just flows. We don't have to wait for someone to write the check. People can't steal the money unless there's some sort of uh, hack in the code. They can't steal the funds out of here. It gets dispersed where we all vote or it gets dispersed and we can all look at the vote. So the level of decentralization that's, that's available there because of the, of the fact that it's some sort of DAO structure and we've all decided on that, that's what's so important here. So that's a little bit about DAOs in, in the realm of governance that we're talking about here in these building blocks. So we hope you enjoyed this. We're going to have one more talk about governance here and how important it is. Um, so we, we hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Visit us uh, on our website, interaxis.io. Uh, our email is info at interaxis.io. Our Twitter handle is at interaxis8. We hope to see you in the next video.